It was after this that I decided I wanted to play the electric guitar. And I remember a lad called Alan Laura from the Tring Secretary Modern School. He had an electric guitar and used to bring it to school. He plugged it into the school record player and it sounded great. I wanted to learn to play like him. The first guitar I owned was an electric Hofner Futurama 2 and a friend called Steve showed me how to play Twist and Shout and it was this that got me really interested to play properly. I put together my own guitar amplifier using a PA amplifier that I had stolen from a Catholic church in Watford. I had inherited a prejudice against the Catholic church from my mum and so when I took the amplifier I ignored my conscience by saying to myself they were wrong anyway so it didn't matter. I then began to get more interested in making music and during my first year at school we formed a band and we played at the end of term school dance. Our gym teacher Mr Pottinger organised this event. In the group lineup was Willie Barrett he's now called Wild Willie Barrett, on the guitar, and vocals, Barge Collier's brother, on vocals. Ian Mayer on bass, Robbie Woods on guitar, and Mayhew was on the drums, and me as a rhythm guitarist. After this, we formed our own band, which was initially the band with no name, but later I called it the Foul Amin, and Ian Meyer was our bass guitarist. Later, Robbie Woods became our lead guitarist, Now, Willie Barrett was the only one of us that made musical fame. He became known as Wild Willie Barrett and played with a guy from Aylesbury called John Otway. There's my first guitar amplifier, stolen from a Catholic church. Now, Wild Willie Barrett's dad was a brilliant man and a musician and a craftsman, and he made an excellent bass guitar for one of Willie Barrett's friends. He wanted an amplifier for Willie's guitar, and the bass player said that he had a 30-watt linear Concord amplifier for sale for a small amount of money. And I jumped in quickly before they made up their mind and bought it off this man. This is the one in the picture. However, I then agreed to sell my 15-watt linear Concord amp that I had stolen from the Catholic Church in North Watford to his dad for a little bit less money, and they bought it from me. I was very pleased, but felt a bit guilty because they got the rough deal, and really they should have had the 30 watt amplifier, which was much better than mine. Little did they know I had stolen the amplifier. I later was able to buy a new amplifier, Vox AT30 for £60, which replaced the one that I had stolen from the Catholic Church. Now one of our regular spots to play on a Saturday night was Court's Dance School, just off Kingsbury Square. Here was our music set. Go to the playlist to have a look. Here is our YouTube Falamine playlist, listed at the bottom of this video in the comments box. After leaving school, we reformed the group and began to play music at various dance halls, and I named the group the Falamine. We would play cover music by bands such as the Rolling Stones, the Who, the Small Faces, the Kinks, Otis Redding, John Lee Hooker, We played My Generation, but I know it wasn't quite right, and I never did find out how to play the right chords to this day. The opening chords we played were four downstrokes on G, followed by four downstrokes on F, but that wasn't right. I always thought if I ever meet Pete Townsend, I'd ask him to show me how to play those opening chords. I really enjoyed playing with the band, but was eventually sacked, and it was then that Malcolm Kirkham and I began to knock around with each other. Malcolm became our lead singer. My favourite band was The Who. This group introduced something into music that was new to us. It was volume. My Generation was a real hit that made The Who. I can remember hearing them at the Grosvenor Dance Hall in Aylesbury. Pete Townsend was on lead guitar, John Entwistle on bass, Keith Moon on drums, Roger Daltrey lead singer. There was not a band to touch them. They were brilliant. We saw them on a number of occasions, including places like Bourne Wood and the Bedford Corn Exchange. Here, take a look at The Who on Wikipedia, at the link in the comment box at the bottom of this video. I remember the amplifier lineup being interested in amplifiers. P. Townsend had two AC100 amplifiers in parallel. John Whistle amplifier lineup was four AC60 watt Vox bass amplifiers 
and their PA system was Vox Columns and Shaw Microphones. The volume added another dimension to the experience of music. I call it rock and real music. It added depth to the sound, and none of us had experienced anything like it before. These are just some of the songs The Who played. Here is our YouTube playlist for some of The Who music, listed in the comment box at the bottom of this video. These were all classic Who numbers, all non-forgettable pieces of music. Malcolm Kirkham used to be our singer, which made five in the band, and we used to go out together on our scooters. I'd inherited my brother's TV 175, Malcolm had a 150cc Lambretta, and we began to mix with the mods in Aylesbury and District. He was later sacked from the group because he messed about. Malcolm would always arrive late, never be in time to set up the equipment. He was always combing his hair or having to press his trousers, and he generally fooled around, and we nicknamed him Coco, Clown, later named Coco for dealing with cocaine. After mixing with the other lads in Aylesbury, I soon found out my brother was well known. And when it was made known that I was Mick Clark's brother, it was like having a license to do anything or say anything I wanted, because I was accepted. I was one of the boys. I recall the time my brother had told me of the parties that they used to have, and I began to want to get involved in all the fun. Pet pills, scooters, mod fashion, dances, girls, permissive sex, all of which I found positive and attractive, and we were looking for a good time in the world. The image I had of my brother was that he was quite a character, and he had a way with girls. I remember that was how I wanted to be and follow him in fame. I remember one impressive occasion, I must have had about 16, and met one of Michael's friends who was a mod. One Saturday night, outside the Grosvenor, he came dressed in a brightly coloured trousers, black plastic mat, wearing girls' makeup around his eyes. He was Glennie Williams. This was the thing to do, and I thought, this is great, and liked it. The normal mode of transport was either a Lambretta or Vespa scooter and crash bars with backrest spare wheels, carriers and mirrors. The scooters would become custom sprayed, and generally, a World War Army green parka or black plastic cape was the uniform. All of this became the world I wanted to live in. I remember my brother coming to see us at Rockley Sands in Bournemouth when I was away with my parents on holiday. I must have been 15 years old. He came dressed in a brown suit with 22-inch Oxford bag trousers with small turn-ups on. His top was a white crew neck with red striped T-shirt. His brown brogue leather shoes, this was some fashion that I had not seen before. It was the mod fashion. He told me... He had to return to Aylesbury to do some repair work and tidy up Mum and Dad's house as they'd had a party that weekend and the place was in a wreck. Apparently, all the Aylesbury mods from the district had been to his party, held at Mum and Dad's home. They had rolled up the carpets and put them in the garage, but the bathroom sink had been pulled off the wall as some girl had got drunk and sat in it. He told me of the promiscuity and it all seemed good fun. It was a year... 1963 or 4, when the Beatles, the Rolling Stones came to fame. Also, Jerry and the Pacemakers had a hit called I Like It. I met Susan, my first girlfriend, at the Friday night dance, being organised at the Aylesbury College. She was 15 years old and looked great. She was blonde with a bob hairstyle. I was 16, wearing my navy blue mod suit. I had arrived at the dance on my Lambretta scooter. I asked her to dance and later asked her if I could take her home. I was feeling great when she agreed and so I covered up my learner plate and I took her home. This was the beginning of my first love. This relationship only lasted a few months when she told me she wanted to finish the relationship. I was heartbroken and she sought to encourage me by saying I would find someone else. I never did and had no interest in finding anyone else my only interest in girls after that was for sex alone, not friendship or anything else. Here's one of my favourite songs of the time, Love is Strange by the Everly Brothers. I first heard this song played by The Who at Boreham Wood. <laughs> 